Everybody, thanks for watching. And just a quick reminder that Greek Mythology Volume 4 is now available, as well as the powers that came to be in 2022. Uh, I want to thank you guys who uh, took advantage of that and support it. I also want to give a shout out to Taylor and her students over at UNLV for um, doing the presentation on my work and research. I really appreciate that from you guys. And um, yeah, let's get into this video. Um, talked about Greek mythology, been harping on that lately a lot because it's really important. Greek mythology and the Greeks and everything pertaining to them. And we got to really get into the ancient Egyptians a lot more and that connection. So of course we know what happened with the ancient Egyptians as far as them being conquered by the Persians and then the Greeks. But what, as I get into in um, the last couple of videos is this understanding that the ancient Egyptians had. Now, one of the things people have to realize and understand that most of the most of the things we get pertaining to the ancient Egyptians comes from Greek sources. I mean, almost all the names, a lot of the interpretations of what they thought the Egyptians was talking about comes from the Greeks. And um, a lot of it is wrong, a lot of it's off. So we have to take that into consideration. But um, the Egyptians did not have a religion. So that's one of the things that's hard to get away from when you study in something that's spiritual, because we are just accustomed to saying religion, 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 religious, or what have you. But it's a difference between, you know, religion and way of life. Like you wouldn't call, you know, what we do, or let's say our hip hop culture a religion. You could kind of sort of call it that, but you wouldn't call just the way people live their daily life a religion. It's what they live and what they what they do. The fact that it's a practice to it. You know, they put it as a you know religion, but it's what the Egyptians always done and everything they did was intertwined into their society, which is one of the reasons why things went the way it went. Because as I talked about, they wasn't allowing themselves to expand. You know, the Egyptians wasn't tolerant of anybody uh, religions and what they was, you know, doing or what have you. It was always about, you know, remembering the past. The focus of the civilization was really on the afterlife and, you know, so much more. But the main thing is the afterlife. So it's important because a lot of the stuff that we see, you know, biblical religion, Islam, it's coming from this, as we all know. And it's important to not get caught up in what is what. What is the understanding of the Egyptians and what they talked about in the Bible as far as the esoteric part of it. So what I mean is when you look at the ancient Egyptian studies, it's rooted in astrology. And you look at the Bible, talk about the same thing, astrology. So I talked about Adam's the whole Adam and Eve thing, uh, understanding that the disciples has to do with the 12 signs of the zodiac. Jesus would represent the sun and we will represent the disciples. So the story of the Hebrews, you know, the bull calf and all that, all of this is still coming from Egypt. It's what was going on around that time when it was putting all this information together and what they were seeing. So when you look at the temple in Dendera on the ceiling, this is the Greeks who did this. And the temple at Dendera, you have the um, Zodiac, Egyptian Zodiac, and it is set to the age of Pisces. But then you go back and you, you can look behind it and see that, you know, you had Aries and Taurus. And I talked about how with the Hebrew Israelites, the Ark of the Covenant, when Moses came down, they was basically worshiping the bull calf, which would be the Egyptian uh, Mentu. And it was supposed to be in the age of Aries, the ram, which would represent the ram of Ammon. So we know you go throughout Egypt, you can see the rams that were out there. And that's where all this stuff comes from, the biblical stuff. We know they got it from the realm of Oman. We understand that during this time, the whole concept of being in a certain age and doing stuff within a certain age, all that came from the ancient Egyptians because they was in the, the age, you might as well say, of the realm of Oman. And then what we have during this time is they gave us, the Greeks gave us Zeus Oman, as I showed you guys with the ram's horn. But we also have Amenhotep and Amenophis, and Tutankhamun. So the whole thing being Amun because of the Ram of Amun. I want to read here from um, Immortality of the Soul. It says here, there's no trace of any struggle for the victory between these systems 
And it's talking about how new understandings came into play and they basically overthrew the old understandings. And sometimes they just kept, you know, multiple understandings of the afterlife or different deities or what have you that on the outside looking in, it would look like religions, usurping religions, but it was just them bringing more concepts into the whole, you know, understanding. So it says each new order of thought was taken as it arose into the circle of the older ones. However, heterogeneous it might be to the rest, the consequence was that in Egypt, there was no religious progress in our sense of the term. But for us, it is essential that old and outworn forms of belief should be cast off. With them, a new doctrine could achieve no greater success than to win a place among the older conceptions of the Egyptian pantheon. And it says here, It seems to us at first as though the relations of the gods to the life beyond had nearly everywhere been regarded as more important than their relation to this life. But this impression is owing to the fact that our material for the study of the Egyptian religion is almost exclusively derived from tombs and funerary temples, while the number of Egyptian monuments unconnected with the cult of the dead is comparatively small. On this account, it has been supposed that both in their religion and in their public life, the Egyptians turn all their thoughts towards death and what lay beyond it. Now, the ancient Egyptians did have festivals and parties and they played games and drank beer and stuff like that. So it wasn't, you know, everything wasn't about death, death, death. It was just, you know, what was truth? Like, what was this really about? They understood their purpose, the existence that they were in. And it was them trying to have the spiritual connection with, you know, the physical and to make sense of all that. So. I talked about how consciousness is, how consciousness expands from experience. And this is what, you know, we've got to look to when we're looking at the culture, because everything in the ancient world, we look at a lot of the ancient civilizations, it was all centered around them, you know, worshiping the gods. And everything was about the sun, God worship, sacrifice, so on and so forth. They didn't take advantage of the planet and what was here the way that the Europeans have once they took over. And the Europeans, once they took over, they, you know, built what we see, which gave us a better, you know, experience in terms of expanding our consciousness. So we got to look at that and understand how that could be a spiritual thing, because, as I said, physically, it's nothing we can do physically to really make a difference here. You understand, like we could build whatever we want to build. What is the point if it's temporary? You know, the stuff is temporary. Something can happen and it's all gone. We doubt, I doubt, that whoever created us would put us here with the purpose of what? Being human. Human for what point? Human not to benefit us physically. We have to be here to benefit us spiritually. And that has to be the point to grow in consciousness and get experience so we can grow in consciousness so we can grow spiritually. Because anything we do here as a people is limited, especially when you go back thousands of years and you understand that the civilizations and entire, you know, millions of people were never going to know what they was here for, what they did, what they accomplished. So it's like, what would be the point of them living and being here to where it's like they never existed? The point must lie in something spiritual, which is what the Egyptians is alluding to. So we look at the Zodiac and how the Egyptians they put it in everything. So the understanding of what the Zodiac is, astrology, the numbers, you know, the signs, that stuff is embedded in Egyptian, you know, the structures, the culture, language, everything is embedded within it. And talked about how the Ark of the Covenant represents the Zodiac and what, what, what it's saying in the Bible is telling the Hebrews that, hey, this is how you're going to win. You're going to win all these battles because you understand astrology. You understand consciousness. So if you do everything based upon this zodiac, the Ark of the Covenant, what it stands for, then you're going to be able to win. It's just metaphorically speaking about this because it's things that the, you know, the Egyptians wouldn't do things on certain days and they would have medicine. Like medicine, you have to take at a certain time or a certain day. 
to correspond with a house or the zodiac or what have you. This was deeply rooted in the Egyptians' system. You know, their everyday life was the zodiac, and we see it everywhere. We, we understand how they used it, and it translates not just you know the zodiac into feelings or emotions or how we look at it today, but into actual numbers. You know, we're going to get into that in the uh, coming DVD on this, but um, it's in their culture. It's all in the culture, and it's what. The Greeks are alluding to in the Bible when it comes to the Ark of the Covenant, as I said, and how they was able to do what they did. So for those of you who have been keeping up with the videos and this topic, if you saw the movie The Eternals, which we're going to get into a lot deeper in the next uh, DVD, The Eternals, that movie gave you everything. Marvel's The Eternals. If you caught up on this information, definitely got to see that movie. They give away a lot. And it's basically, it was almost like, you know... <sighs> watching it and looking at one of my videos because stuff I talk about is all in there. And they basically get into, you know, some people will say, uh, I read a lot of re reviews, uh, what they talk about on um, ancient aliens, uh, as far as the aliens doing it, you know, coming down and doing everything. But this is real life. You got to look at it and, and see that ancient civilizations spoke about beings coming down, plain, plain and simple. They just, they spoke about it. They drew it. So in the movie, it's showing you just that. I talked about how this planet had to be basically terraformed to fit us, to receive us. And something wiped out the huge beast of the land and wiped out Megalodon and stuff that was in the oceans, made the oceans so we can be able to eat from it. And it's like the planet was changed to fit us. They're giving you that in the movie. And then the gods basically was helping mankind out and showing them how to do things and basically helping them progress and, um, you know, showing them things that is going to help them progress. But it's a deep movie. It's a lot more to it, which we'll get into. But looking at it from the ancient Egyptian point of view and astrology and how everything can be taken to the zodiac, to astrology uh, in the Bible, and we see so many different instances. And I talked about, you know, us being the disciples or the disciples representing us and understanding that Jesus is your consciousness. God represents your all-powerful subconscious. Jesus says, no way you can get to the Father but by me. And it's just talking about you uniting that. But also, it's giving you meditation and understanding that the only way you can talk to him, remember, you're supposed to pray. It's meditation. you getting in contact with your conscious self so that you can be programmed by your subconscious mind to do what you need to do. But it's a deep thing uh, when you start connecting all of it with astrology and how emotions, as I told you guys before, emotions is a different thing. It's an energy. It's not just physical. The ancient Egyptian part of it is big, but it's time is over. You know, we're supposed to learn from what they left for us. And we talk about Kemet a lot. We know everybody learned from Kemet and took from Kemet. But that time was for us to understand and then move on from it. But we were forced to move on from it into where we are now. But it's tough and it's gonna be hard for a lot of people to understand what that really means and why what happened happened. And I talked about how the Egyptians was doing things one way and then it just stopped and it was a downhill you know, time for the ancient Egyptians and they were taken over and then we had the rule of the Ptolemies. And the Ptolemies basically start instilling Hellenization and instilling everything that we see and converting things. It's important because uh, we can clearly go back and look at ancient Kemet and then look at Christianity and see that they stole. Talked about how we get the statue of Serapis Christos and how it parallels with Jesus Christ and how we can see thousands of years ago, long before Jesus, they was trying to get us to worship, you know, a white image. And then we have Jesus and it's a connection. You have the whole connection with the Greeks and Romans. I talked about with Heracles and Hercules and how everything we see is drawing from the Greeks. And then they're drawing from the ancient Egyptians. So it's a major part. And I don't want to give away too much. That's why this is all over the place. <laughs> but to get you into the understanding that Kemet is still the key, but it's not the key for us to keep harping on, but to learn that lesson and then move on. So what's next? What's the next stage? What is this all about? And this is what we're going to be getting to getting into 
in the next uh, videos, understanding what's next. What is the key of astrology and how to start plugging all this stuff in with what we've learned so far? Pounded the Bible on you guys, got into so much biblical stuff. The biggest thing that's next is the Zodiac, is astrology. Understanding what all this stuff is about with birth charts and everything like that. We're going to get into all that because it's not what people think it is. But understanding this major connection with astrology, the Bible, ancient, ancient Kemet, and how we're supposed to apply it and use it the way they're using it against us, which we talked about a little bit in Voodoo. We'll get into a lot more. But one of the biggest things you got to learn right off the bat is the way that the ancient Egyptian, you know, Zodiac was taught, the way they uh, taught astrology is not the way we see it today. You have to understand that we are all the signs. You were born on your, you know, your chart. You were born on that time, that house, so on and so forth. You will exhibit more traits from that sign, but you are every single sign. You can read, you could be a Taurus and read some signs from Cancer or Aquarius and you'll see traits. You know, you can read through every single sign and you'll see traits within yourself because, you know, if you take into this, this information, if you believe in it, then you've been incarnating and you've been incarnating and you have so many different energies and memories from past lives and different times you was born and so many things you brought with you that's coded within you. And the Eternals movie, remember, what was the big thing about that? Their memories. So these people going out to these planets until the planet is basically destroyed and then they start all over again and their memories are stored. And then they go back to the planet thinking they just completed something, but they're not understanding what it was you know, really about. But it's a big deal to understand what that is. Memory. Memory is the key to this big, big fucking key we're going to get into. And it's one of the things you got to look at and see that when you go to sleep, you don't remember who you are. You don't remember that you went to bed before, you know, you went to sleep. Now that's why you're sleeping because you're in the bed. Memory is gone. You're a totally different person, different experience. Same situation. Reincarnate, you come back. Memory is gone. What is that? How do we make that connection? Where do we make it at? And it's so deep when we start getting into it. And um we're gonna definitely get into it. But I want to put out this video real quick and just touch on this before we start getting into this information a little bit more heavier. Uh, as I said, I want to thank you guys who took advantage of the sale and um, appreciate everybody that's supporting and I'll see you guys next video.